Hi guys, so um, this is back. I'm back. Um, I did a few tutorials on my fertility meds that I was taking about three years ago. I did the Gonal F and the Pregnil and then I did some follow up and just a little bit of information on um, my fertility treatment, my plan moving forward and uh, my polycystic ovaries and then I just sort of I really didn't know what else to do and where to go from there. So it's been three years. Um, there's a lot to sort of um, update you all on and um, a lot of good things, a lot of positive things. And I've just, you know, I spoke to my husband and I'm like, maybe we should share this story. Especially being in Australia, I really do struggle finding um, YouTube videos on fertility stories and success stories. Um, in Australia, um, I find a lot in America and sometimes it's just nice to sort of hear from somebody local who's been through it. Um, it's also great because I did actually see a fertility specialist in Australia, in Melbourne, um, who was amazing. So I'm able to um, give you her details if you wanted them, um, please sing out. She was absolutely brilliant. I will, um, today I'm just going to talk about my journey and how I got to where I am today. And um, I will be doing more regular videos about um, my fertility specialist, my fertility treatment, what medications I use, what worked, what didn't work. Um, polycystic ovaries, of course, is a main factor. Supplements I used um, and all that fun stuff. Side effects, there'll be, I'm just going to really sort of zone in and um, give you all like a really comprehensive um look into what polycystic ovaries is like for me and um, what treatments are available which is probably the same in America and other countries um, but it's nice to hear someone from home if you are watching otherwise if you are watching from somewhere else um, thank you and um, I hope you enjoy it so first of all I'm going to rewind so I'm kind of gonna talk about something that happened 16 my 16 year old um, just briefly, we'll take, and I'm not going to go every day from 16 years ago. So a week after my 21st birthday party, I found out I was pregnant. Um, quite a shock, quite a surprise. Um, we all know how babies are made. Um, some babies are made a lot easier. And at 21, I would expect that a lot of 21-year-olds would uh, conceive a lot easier than a 38-year-old, which is what I am now. So there was no charting, he was unplanned, there was no charting, there was no talk of infertility, polycystic ovaries, there was nothing. He was um, a very big surprise, very blessed surprise. So um, I was a single mum for 12 years. Um, I separated from his father when he was three months old, so 12 years I was a single mum. And then I met my husband. So there's a 10 year age gap between my husband and I, he's younger. And obviously the age is not an issue. The only time we found age was an issue when it came to milestones. Getting married, having children. He's 10 years younger so he's going to want to wait and a little bit. But because marriage doesn't matter, I can get married any time. Having babies was a big issue. So I definitely... Um, made sure he was aware of that and um, discussed why um, the need to have children might come sooner for him um, due to my age. Um, we did talk about it after about a year of being together. We decided we would start trying because I was confident that I would have issues. Um, I had been diagnosed with polycystic ovaries maybe about 10 years before that. So um, I, I knew things were going to, you know, be a bit of a struggle. Didn't know it was going to be quite a, as much of a struggle as what we had had. So um, we'll just, I'll just quickly touch on it. Um, we tried for six months. I uh, went and saw a fertility doctor, um, did some fertility treatments there, which I will go into more detail. And um, then we had a miscarriage, went on, saw another fertility doctor and... Um, it still had no success. We did the injections, we did everything, it still had no success. So then after that, I wanted to have a break. We were going to do IVF because even though I was responding to the medication, my infertility wasn't because of polycystic ovaries anymore, it was unexplained. So we had a five month gap to save money and get ourselves ready for the big IVF. So, 
I wanted two months to myself. I wanted two months to do whatever I wanted. I wanted to just be me. I stopped all medications. I stopped, stopped taking vitamins. I stopped, ta stopped taking my supplements, metformin, injections. Obviously, I stopped, stopped going to see my fertility specialist. I just wanted a break. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know that even though we were just doing the injections and timed intercourse, it's grueling. It's tough. Your whole body is consumed with having a baby. Your mind is like, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? This cycle, failed cycle after failed cycle after failed cycle is just grueling. It is soul destroying, let's be honest. No one is expecting to fail and just your period comes and your period comes and your period comes and then it doesn't come and then it comes late and then it doesn't come at all and then the medication has done something to your cycle so you have to take more medication and it's just enough I'm like I don't know how much more I can take so I had a big two months I just enjoyed myself I didn't drink for six months while I was trying over the Christmas period on the fertility meds so I missed Christmas and New Year's no celebrations nothing like that so I enjoyed myself I got a surprise I fell pregnant I fell pregnant off everything off all my medications off everything I was pregnant. The tests come back positive and I was nervous. How can this be? So everything went to the, went, rang my fertility doctor even though I wasn't seeing her and that's, you know, hysterics. I'm like, oh my God, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. So um, she was amazing. Again, I didn't conceive on fertility meds. She did ultrasounds every week for me up until 10 weeks um, because she knew this was important. And she understood that this was important. And having a previous miscarriage, she knew that this reassurance and this comfort and just doing the ultrasound for me was what I needed. She was amazing. So I am now blessed with a second boy, a 16 month old son again. Um, everything went well. I had a scheduled cesarean um, due to having an emergency cesarean with my 16 year old quite crazy but um, apparently they don't let you go over 39 weeks if you had a previous cesarean so even though it was 16 years ago I thought that was a bit bizarre but that doesn't matter so I will do separate videos for all the things that I am sort of brushing over um, I just want to keep this sort of short and sweet about my journey so I'm now cycle day 15 and I this is our first official month of trying to conceive my last cycle was a little bit sort of off I had a 32 day cycle and a five day period, which is huge. I never have five day periods. I only have three at the most. Um, so it's, I do, I've been doing the um, ovulation tests at the moment and I'll just see if I've got one here. Oh, here we go. I've been using these ovulation tests at the moment. And if you look, it tells you the sensitivity, which I only found last night, which is 20 MIU. Where is it? So this, I got 60 of these for at $15 on eBay, of course. And um, because of polycystic resolutinizing hormone is always a little bit sort of uh, not accurate in the ovulation strips, I've had extremely barely their lines, um, maybe three times in the last 15 days, or maybe not even that, maybe like last nine days, because I only started testing at cycle day six. And today I'm starting to get darker ones. I will, um, I can't, it won't show, even though it's quite obvious when you walk in, you can see it, I can't show it on the camera, it doesn't show up quite clear, even though that it's not as dark as that, the control line, but it's still quite prominent, it's still considered a negative, however, I look at it and I would think maybe that's a bit of a positive, but that's just because there's a line there and that's, um, what you would get with a pregnancy test, which is quite different to an ovulation test. I also do a saliva test with this. So you basically get the saliva off there, sort of wipe it on but not touch this little glass thing. Wait for it to dry, put a light, put a light here and look through this bit. And it's a magnifying glass. When you get the ferning, um, you can get lots of pictures to show you different um, ways, different types of ferning. 
Um, I did have fanning last Wednesday, which was cycle day 12, which would have been crazy early for me to ovulate. Um, so I did have that sort of follicle, follicle growing kind of symptoms um, then. And I think that maybe things were just growing, getting ready to move around. Today I'm getting some more... Um, you know, the lines are getting darker on the ovulation strips. I've just done another saliva test. I haven't checked it for ferning. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to ovulate in the next, you know, 24 to 36 hours. However, I will keep you guys posted and I will try and take a picture or a quick video um, of the ovulation strips. I've got to set them all up. I want to keep my videos kind of between the 10 minute mark. Um, obviously, when I show you my ovulation ones, it'll only be a couple of minutes just to give you polycystic ovaries covers is affects so many families and couples and women and there's so many different variations and this is why I want to share this with you guys because there's never just um, everyone stock standard this is what happens so I want to show you guys so if you're worried about something or you're thinking is that right is my body completely off then you can find my video and go well generally speaking if my body's completely off too so then it'll be um it's just different variations of what I've seen as well because I do look and go has somebody had their you know no lines or very faint lines and then a little bit but you know um I'm struggling to find a similar story to mine with the polycystic ovaries so I think that's all I'm going to cover in this video um we are trying for baby number three um at the moment so I will um continue to do regular updates and um I'll do the ovulation one and I'll go through all the other stuff that I brushed on briefly in this video. So thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because I will be um, more frequently um, doing vlogs now. So take care. Talk soon. Bye.